Welcome to Staying Sweet, the podcast. Tune into my weekly podcast to hear me, Alice Bradley, delve deeper into building your personal brand. Uplevel your mindset and tap into your highest potential using what makes you, you. All while staying sweet, of course. Whether you're looking to level up within an existing business, start something of your own, or create a fulfilling, balanced and healthier lifestyle, Each episode will be curated especially to inspire and encourage your own success. Plus, don't miss out on the Staying Sweet specials, a series of exclusive interviews and conversations with Alice's network of entrepreneurs and brand owners. Don't forget there are new episodes every Monday. If you enjoyed the podcast, please do leave a rate and review. For more daily content, check out at Staying Sweet Podcast over on Instagram. Stay sweet. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Staying Sweet, the podcast. I am joined today by the wonderful Paige. Hello. This is a very interesting podcast episode, guys. <laughs> Believe it or not, we are recording this right now in West Wittering Car Park after a beach shoot day. <laughs> and we're hot right now. We're like, so hot. We are so covered in sand. We are. It has been one of the most amazing days. Oh, really productive. Nice day. It's like... One of the hottest days in the UK, I think, so far, isn't it? A hundred percent. And we went in really with the intention to get content shot, which we did so quickly. We did it so fast, smashed it out. Smashed it out. And then we decided to have a beach day, um, which has been super fun. We got food, we've tanned, we've burned, (laughs) we've swam in the sea. We did, we went for a swim, we got freaked out by seaweed. We didn't see any jellyfish. No, we didn't, luckily, because there's usually jellyfish around here. There is. Um, But we kind of lucked out, which was good. But we got lots of content shot and that is why I brought the lovely page onto Aww. the podcast today just because you're a model in your own right you've got a plethora of experience within the, within the industry you're also on social media and you show up as a creator as well and I thought you'd be a really good voice for those maybe wanting to get into the industry but also in your own niche in your own like market of the industry oh well thank you i feel very flattered to have been asked um, anytime to be here, that you want to that you want to chat to me about this stuff i know it's very nice it's super exciting i really want to understand kind of how you started i feel like it would give maybe others out there who want to pursue a career maybe similar to you how you kind of got yourself in there because obviously it's one of those types of industries where it just takes one thing to change the game yeah. Was there a particular yeah. moment when you started that you thought I could actually do this as a career? Um, well, I kind of started in a weird way because I didn't really go into the modeling industry um initially. I'm trained in musical theatre, so I'm trained as a singer, dancer and actress. Um and have always kind of done that and I gig and I sing. And then in 2020, when the pandemic hit, I had an agent who was previously sending me to like acting commercials and things like that, who started sending me to modeling calls. And I was like, oh, I was like, okay. Like, I mean, it was COVID and as a freelancer, we're like, yeah, send me to anything because I just didn't have any work. It was a strange time. It was a very strange time. And I was like, yeah. Like at one point I was like nannying during the pandemic. So I was like modeling and nannying, which I feel like are two things that just do not go hand in hand. Oh, a very interesting <laughs> combination of it things. It really was. Um, but yeah, and then I just, it was going really well. And like I was getting quite a lot of castings and booking jobs. Mm. And then I moved to a bigger modeling agency uh, at the beginning of 2021 and yeah, that whole year I just kind of was working nonstop and it was really mad. Um, and I've realised that I love it and I've met amazing people and I just really enjoy what I do. Amazing. So, I feel yeah. like it does come really naturally to you. Oh, thank you. And you've just got the most incredible figure, incredible face. <laughs> oh, I just do God. think you're born to do it. I think some people <laughs> are meant to be the faces of things and to be, you know, their own personal brand and show up as themselves. But I think that's what's quite special about content these days and and particularly the modeling career and other people's modeling careers it is personal brand based yeah and it's like who you are it's not just like oh here's a face we're gonna use her for our campaign it's who is she who is Paige like it's more about your quirks and your personality and are you able to bring that out in shoots um well it's funny you say that because I think we were talking about this earlier Mm. when there's some brands who do really want you to show your personality and they've sort of booked you for you Mm -hmm. as well as your look but there are some brands where it's definitely more just like you're being used as a body um 
What do for, you like, prefer? Clothing brands. Oh, I definitely prefer the ones when I can like get my personality out a bit. And, yeah. and they're always just a bit more fun on set as well. Um, and you can just be a bit more creative and they let you sort of let loose a little bit more. Um, yeah, so I definitely think I prefer those ones. But I think everyone does. Everyone prefers the creative shoots. Um, but we love all shoots because, you know, we love <laughs> regular income. <laughs> yes, we do. Especially when you're freelance. We exactly. like that regular check. Anything that's regular. Please and thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, there's no shame in doing that. There is also a guy literally reversing oh God, and like, I thought he was going to hit oh my car. God, he so still close. could hit my so car. Close. Wow. Oof. This is a, this is a very risky. interesting podcasting risky. experience, guys. This is like Top Gear. But like, like top, top gear, gear modelling on the road. like uh, Yeah, I don't know if any of you guys have been to West Wittering Beach, but the car park is carnage. It is carnage. Um, it's, just a, it's just a free-for-all. It really is. And we are in a prime spot, yeah. sat in the car. People are watching us to see if we're leaving. So I know, we're and they're confused by the fact that we've got mics. We're literally being given like <laughs> side eyes every two seconds. But do you know what? It's one of those things like very much like how we've shot today it's just using what we've got exactly. utilizing got our, where use, we are yeah, exactly and making the most of it and how yeah. good was today's shoot oh my god today's shoot was so good we got here at what 7 a.m 7 a.m it's yes, now four Jenny. o'clock it guys four o'clock. <laughs> like this is what i mean dedication to the fact that i wanted you on the podcast and thank you yes. so much for taking the time to oh, do no. this in a i hot literally like car. just booked out this whole day for you because i was like yeah we're gonna have the best day oh my god we're gonna do portfolio updates and we're gonna record a podcast podcast oh. big day big wednesday it is oh. a very big wednesday i don't know if i was allowed to say what day it no is. no you can <laughs> do it when you're like, oh my god released. no it's fine like, ah. so, no that's fine these these are going out on mondays but yes oh, okay. it is a wednesday today and how crazy that it's midweek and it's so chaotic like obviously it's, it's so the summer chaotic. holidays but when Everyone you're doing a shoot as well you really have to factor in all these things so we yeah. we had an idea in mind we knew we, we wanted to do beach shots very like rich editorial mm-hmm deep colour tones just yes. just very high profile professional shots for your portfolio yeah do you think those are important wanted. or kind of why, what pointed you into that direction I think your I do think that your portfolio is everything when mm. you're a model I think it's you need to take the time to kind of look at um, other models who are similar or in a, heading in a direction that you want to go in. Good, so I think yeah. it's good to work out where you kind of want to be. Mm-hmm. It's also okay to like try a few different areas, I think, because you kind of don't know until you've started. Oh my God, there's a really fluffy dog that shouldn't be out in this heat. Oh my gosh, there is. I'm so sorry. Guys, so the amount really of dogs. No, oh. but this is another thing. Like, we're just no, caring like people. A, what We've dog is so that? Many... It's like a Siberian... It's a dog that definitely oh, shouldn't be no. on the sand. It's a, it's a, it's a lassie. It's <gasps> yeah, like dog. a lassie dog. Like so much fluff. Oh, so much lassie. fluff it on must a hot be sand. So hot. Oh no. I'm Gosh. sorry. And totally you guys can probably hear like the sound of Spitfires <laughs> because we're by a Spitfire field. <laughs> oh, are we? Airfield. Yeah, that's a Spitfire oh, literally flying over. That. So it's a very rich, <laughs> interesting ASMR podcast. I today. feel like you're really getting into what this industry is which is you're a freelancer and you do what like you just show up where you are told to show up yeah and you make use of what you've got you don't always need a fancy studio a hundred percent you know I came yeah I came to you with the idea of like wanting to shoot and I wanted to do something that was a bit editorial like sports illustrated style oh I think we smashed that today you look insane oh I can't wait to get the shots back. I think with the shots that you that you do and like going with the flow, you never really know what to expect. Like obviously you can go in with an idea in mind, but you've mm. got to be flexible to your surroundings. Freelancing is very similar in that circumstances can change very quickly. It, I Definitely. guess it's the skill of being adaptable is what you're oh, kind yeah, of saying. Yes, and like, yeah, and like just being I mean. able to like transfer your skills across everything. Because oh, like yeah. you say, you were doing like commercial stuff, you wanted to be in the more sort of, I guess, TV stuff, would you say? Or... Um, yeah, I guess. I think, no, the initial aim was like musicals. Like I'm, yeah, professionally trained in musical theatre. So I, you know, I used to audition and I kind of stopped doing that because the mental side of it is just huge. Mm. Um, it's like a massive toll, not for everyone, but I know a lot of people who are in that industry who do really struggle with the rejection from auditions and kind of being like messed around by, um, you know casting directors and things like that and I think the acting industry is very similar um so I kind of got out of that and decided I wanted to just sort of like sing and go down that path rather than continue with this like constant rejection and finding it very emotionally 
difficult mm. um, after I graduated. It certainly is draining, isn't it, when mm, definitely. you are getting told no more than you're told yes. Oh, and I, yes. I think that's how I personally felt about my experience in the influencing industry, and it's probably why I've stepped back from it and oh. gone back into photography. Yeah, because it's photography. Yeah, a similar thing. You've got to be able to take the rejection, but it's yeah, hard. Yeah, sometimes it really, like, you, you just get to a point where you don't want it anymore, and, no. like, it's okay to move past that and move away from that. <laughs> Guys, there's an 11 out of 10 that's just walked past us. And you can probably hear and us. You can... Oh, he's parked right there. Oh, my God. Oh, hello. That's his girlfriend. Oh, that's, that's, his girlfriend. that's his girlfriend. <laughs> Guys, this is what I mean. You're getting such a real experience today. Oh, my God, that was amazing. Um, Both of us just got I know, completely sidetracked. I know we did. And the girlfriend's <laughs> angrily vaping as she's oh walking my, past us. She can probably hear. Oh, my oh God, she's she in can... kitten heels on the beach. Kitten, oh, she's in a she's in a kitten mule, guys. She no, looks like she's going to Ocean Beach. But were you in a kitten mule this morning? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I was not. It's, that is sat in a pearl I will necklace. be honest, guys. West oh Wittering is not a place for even sandals or flip flops. <laughs> no. They come straight off. They came straight off. I barely even got out of the car with shoes on. Yeah, like, but this morning no. it was perfect. Like we got the shots. It was amazing. We did. Super productive. Feel amazing about the shots that yes, we achieved. Yes, I'm so looking and, forward to them. To getting them back. Definitely. I feel like we work really well together. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's another thing when you when you are freelance, a lot of what you do is based on like what you organise and the people you mingle with and network with. Everything's about you and yeah. you're only gonna get out what you put in. Yeah, definitely. Ultimately. So definitely. how have you navigated that? Because it must have been quite hard initially to kind of work out where you were going, but also do your own thing. Yeah, it's kind of hard and also like it's quite lonely, I would say, because I mean you meet a lot of people, but in general you're not working with the same people all the time so you know unless you've been sent through the call sheet before a job um you kind of don't know who's going to be on set and like it might be someone you know you might know the makeup artist you might know the photographer but in general you're kind of showing up and you have to show up and make friends that day Mm -hmm. um how do you feel with that with obviously lingerie and with i don't know products that are more exposing and and Oh, see, Maybe like, sharing more of a vulnerable side, or yeah. do you find you switch on? I with that? So I prefer my favorite thing to shoot is lingerie Amazing. and swimwear. Like straight off the bat, I prefer it to doing fashion. Um, I think because the brands I shoot for, it fits me so well. Like everything is really specific to my like bra size, um, and there are people always in the room who are making sure everything looks really good. Whereas with fashion, I feel like it's a little bit more fudged. Um, I think a lot of models will tell you that as well. I think we all kind of know it, but it's hard when all you're seeing online is like models looking perfect in a dress. But what you don't know is that it's pinned to shit behind you. 100%. Um, Like, you know, eight out of ten times that will be the case. Nothing ever really fits properly. But when it comes to like underwear and swimwear, it's very hard to kind of get away with that. that, So I feel like it's a little bit more authentic, um, which is why I love it. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I've got things I'm working towards with my agent um, that we've got sort of things that are set that I need to do and we need to do together to be able to get to where I want to get to by kind of next year. I'd mm-hmm. say a few things that need to be put into place by the end of the year and it's all heading in the right direction. But yeah, it's definitely kind of swimwear is where I want to go down. Swimwear and lingerie Amazing. is what I want to head towards and... Yeah, hopefully amazing. So do get you? Bigger. Yeah, do you think that having an agent has really helped keep you motivated or like on the ball, keep work consistent? Oh, definitely. I think that I don't. I mean, I started off doing free, like sort of freelancing model as well because I did have an agent, but they were more for TV and commercials and stuff. So mm. before I signed with an agency in at the beginning of twenty twenty one, I was doing freelance work. Like brands were contacting me on Instagram, um, but I do think an agent is essential for things like contracts, usage, um, getting paid properly as well. Because like it's kind of hard when you start to know how much you're worth and how much your shots are worth and your images being used on websites and for how long a period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, agents obviously know all that stuff. They've got the contracts. They know what you're worth. Yeah. So I do You're less think, likely to be like walked all over. Yes, exactly. And also a lot of brands won't, like big brands won't go near models who aren't signed just because they go to agencies. They don't look for models on Instagram. They go to agencies and agencies will send them their models depending on what specifications they're looking for so that's kind of the way to get in with big brands with consistent work 
is definitely to to yeah have a have an agent I would say and also they're a really good guide so if you're feeling a bit lost you don't know where which direction you want to go in um you can just chat with them like agents are not scary people they're like there to help you and you're there to like work with them yeah so it's I like think, a duality there yeah definitely it? like you're working with each other because at the end of the day if you don't get jobs they don't get paid definitely. so <laughs> it's a mutual you know we all want to work yeah so a hundred percent and do you think that there have been things in the pipeline that you think you wouldn't have necessarily got not not based on like who you are but obviously when you're building a personal brand having a personal brand initially before going to an agency did you think that was important or did the agency bring those like high profile brands to you um was it a mix of both it was kind of a mix of both like there's certain brands who've been like on my I'd say like a vision board type thing for a while who I'd started working with before I was signed with my current agent but also they have brought bigger brands to me as well um so yeah it's kind of a little bit of both like I'm still I still do um, get contacted on Instagram quite a lot by brands for modelling and I just kind of send them through my agency. Um, It's interesting that people do contact you that way. Yeah, so many brands try and contact direct um, because they want to get you cheaper um, or, you know, they see an agent as a faff rather than as a help, which it isn't because, you know, an agent's got everything ready to go, like, immediately. Yeah. Whereas if it's just me, I'm like, I don't know how to write my own contract. Yeah. Like... Oh, my gosh. I would... I'm at that point now where I'm like, mm, I could probably do with management. Or, yeah. like, something to deal with the influx of messages, not just for yeah. my photography, but just, like, everything together because yeah, I'm do doing like a little so bit of everything. Journalism. Yeah. I think it really does help you streamline you towards your goals and get you closer to your goals yeah um i think that's it like yeah the streamlining they're very good at trying trying to like this is worth it this is what your part yeah exactly what's working what's not trying to find your path Mm. like i feel like everyone is out there faking it till they make it like that's one thing i will say i am definitely faking it till i make it i mean you're doing it well honey Um, (laughs) you're making it work honestly i see your content and i'm like wow yeah She's oh definitely it. like the you whole have Instagram. been up there with like people that I wanted to work with for a long time <gasps> oh my goodness just because oh. but you do you glow and you show up oh my god I'm glowing right now look at this sweat we are literally we are in the car with no air con guys oh my god and it's like 20, sorry 28 or I think is it it's up? like 30 I think it's yeah, it's, the, it only... it's 28. Oh, my God. But, yeah, we're in a car and it's 28, like, no air con we're on right now. We're steaming up right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it'd be really nice to talk to you about specifically becoming... Like, I don't want to label you, but a fuller bust <laughs> model and yeah. somebody who has navigated a new niche. I, it's not a new niche, but I feel like it's a more celebrated niche. Um... Yeah, I'm. I really like that sort of. I know you said you don't want to like label, but I, I, I don't mind that label because I think it's. I think that's a really helpful label to have, being like a fuller bust model, because there aren't really many. Um, there aren't many brands who are specifically catering for people with a fuller bust, whether it's a small back with like a large cup size or big back with large cup size. There aren't that many brands out there, um, and there aren't that many models who genuinely have big boobs like that's really interesting though mm. that they wouldn't select women that represent the brand that they're selling to yeah i think that like there's a lot of change happening in the industry and mm. it's definitely like i'm being used more by by the brands that i grew up um buying from like in my teenage years which i'm always like high five 15 year old page like look who you're modeling for now like it feels like a really good pat on the back moment um but yeah it would have been nice to see like when i was but i think everyone thinks this it would have been nice to see your own body shape in the media like out there definitely on magazines on webs did we have websites back then i don't know we had websites but i don't think <laughs> we did, things we didn't what, really shop on them though did yeah we? it, it was wasn't really school. it wasn't really done it was like, like that billboards and yeah. posters in shops i guess but definitely. it would have been nice i feel like everyone thinks i would love to see my own body shape on that mm. so i think that's where the fashion industry is moving to is it's kind of you know like body positivity is way more celebrated now and it's so much more diverse in the modeling industry but don't get me wrong there's still a really long way to go um it's by no means sort of 
yep, we're good. Ticked that box. We have diverse models. It's kind of always growing, always evolving because there's always people who are under under represented represented. Ugh. Um in in every industry I guess yeah I think so and I think sometimes things are done almost like you say to kind of tick a box be done with it yeah whereas exactly like, rather than authentically brands, yeah whereas brands now it. are actually going right we need someone who is you know a 38g or like do you know what I yeah. mean like that's someone's actual bra size yeah. not like filling a cup do you remember when there was lots of models doing and I, I know models that have done it maternity yeah and they st- not been pregnant yeah they but they still do that um loads of them but now what's good is that i think websites have to declare if it's a model wearing a fake bump or mm. if it's, it's a just genuinely such a pregnant bizarre woman. concept but like there's loads of pregnant models you know get them in to shoot your maternity um, it's a really interesting yeah. psychology it is um, but i think that's the thing as long like websites i feel like are now being made and brands are being made to declare certain things Whereas previously they weren't. So I think previously we weren't as aware. And like the internet, you know, wasn't as big a thing back when we were teenagers. I'm making myself sound so old here. <laughs> I'm only 27. Not at all. I just think things have changed things so Things have changed so much. And everything's, everything's so accessible immediately. So you can find out if something is edited or tweaked. Like it's so easy to find out. Whereas like, yeah, when we grew up, it wasn't. And you kind of thought that that's, that's what things that's were. That's what it was. Yeah. Like we didn't realise that like, everything was edited airbrushed and yeah I think now you know even down to um uh like brands leaving stretch marks on their models I'm like yes, yes like and that they should never it's have been almost taken out not in first like place. weird to see but weird to see yeah because you're not you're like oh like when you don't see mm. super highly edited stuff in editorial yeah for like beauty products or whatever and you know vogue or whatever yeah it's surprising yeah, and it's, it's weird yeah. like it shouldn't be because we see normal people every day and we yeah. know skin texture is real we know people have lumps and bumps but but it's still strange to see that high profile oh 100 percent, like unairbrushed mm. and so that kind of brings me on to you showing up on social media because obviously you are a personal brand you have a responsibility to i don't want to give you that but like you naturally <laughs> will as you're following you know grows you have a responsibility yeah. to show up authentically as you but also yeah. representing maybe an under you know shouted about demographic yeah. how do you feel about that like has I it do, been easy have there been positives and negatives well yeah there's definitely positives and negatives and because my following grew really fast like re- it was really quick and a lot I got very overwhelmed um mm. and I suddenly got so stressed about what I should be because before I just kind of posted whatever I wanted whenever I wanted posted a bit of like modeling work but also out for dinner with friends Mm. you know that classic thing when you're drunk and your friend says something funny that was going on my stories and things like that so I think when suddenly I had my following that was growing by so much I suddenly got a bit stressed and I was like oh my god I can't post that stuff like even though that's me um and for about two months I kind of stopped posting as often and sort of as myself I felt like every picture I posted or video I posted had to be like perfected um so not like edited or things like that just meant that you know I couldn't post you know me with a glass of wine with my best friend on her birthday Mm. because I was like you know no one wants to see that that's not what they're here for but then I don't know I I it's actually quite funny because my friend was like turn off your Instagram notifications. And I was like, what? She was like, just turn them off. She was like, go to your settings. That scares me. Turn off notifications. And I did it. And I was like, oh, it was so weird. It immediately like was like a weight had been lifted because it was like my phone was always pinging at me. Mm. And it was always Instagram with someone wanting something, someone messaging or not even wanting something, just like comments and things like that. And when I turned it off, I was like, oh, now it's my choice to go on Instagram. Nice. So I still, you know, check it regularly, but they've been off now for four months. And it's given me like a way more healthy relationship because it's like I choose at what point in the day I want to go on it. And you're not going to miss like messages or things like that because if you're checking it, you know, at least once a day, which Mm. I definitely check it more than that, um, 
you know, you're not going to miss anything. Mm. Like, it's maximum a I few hours. I think that's it. It's the addiction to yeah. what am I missing out yeah, on. Yeah, what am I missing out on. It's FOMO. Not, it's FOMO, mm. but it's like a new breed of FOMO. It's yeah. not like, it's not the fear of missing out. It's it's something else. It's really yeah. deep-rooted into the psyche now. It's like, if I miss out, I'm going to miss this opportunity or yeah. this bit of breaking news. I'm not going to be the first to know. It's like this addiction to knowing everything yeah. at all times. Yeah, like Where knowing what are, everyone's doing all the time and telling everyone what you're doing creepy. all the time. Yeah, and it's weird that you say about the turning of notifications because I'm actually currently going through a silent period. August, yeah. I've decided I'm taking it off. Yeah. I'm not posting any stories. I'm not posting. And I've realised I do so much for validation. Yeah, I do so much for people to see what I'm doing yeah like people just see you're having fun like look yeah. oh my god this is and actually so I was fun. more miserable in those moments than the moments like today it's been friggin amazing oh it's been so nice okay, we literally, I posted on my photography yeah. page but like that's for work but yes oh no yeah that's different but I think yeah I think for me it was turning the switch over for Instagram in my head mm-hmm. now Instagram it is work but also I I don't know something just like switched and I was like I don't care mm. and I have started you know I, I kind of realised no actually people started following me for me so like just keep being me mm. um, and I think I've become more authentic and I will only work with brands who I genuinely are, I feel like everyone says this like every influencer will say like I only work with brands that I really you know yeah. support and care about but I genuinely do like I do a lot of fuller bust like lingerie promotion but they are brands that I genuinely worn mm. since I was a teenager mm. Um would you say uh-huh. that the scale of your profile enables you to be choosy? Because I remember when I was first starting out, there were brands that I was working with simply to grow. Oh, yeah. Do you yes, think I definitely you, think it's probably a bit a of a luxury. Yeah, to have that. Um, like, I can say no to this brand because I'll yeah. get paid from another Yeah, exactly, because you know there's other things or, going or on. Place, I definitely yeah. think that, yeah, that's coming from a place of, yeah, it's a privilege because of the following Mm. Um, that you can now do that. But I also think that, you know, even though people do want to grow their following quickly, I think that saying yes to brands that you don't genuinely believe in isn't going to help with that following. Yes. I, I do think Definitely hold out now. and patience. With, like, is, the authenticity. Yeah, of exactly. Because people, like, you can see, like, on the internet if people are being themselves or if people are kind of faking it or telling you what you want to hear. I think, like, you can see that in person. You can see it. It all comes across on Instagram. And also, like, you do need to remember that Instagram is still a highlight reel. Like, I don't post about when I have, like, really bad anxiety days. I'm starting to do that more because I do think it's more relatable. And I've realised I do actually need to do that more. But it's kind of hard because it's a side that you don't put on the internet. Yeah, I find it hard as well because it's like, I put so much of my life out already. Do they really need to know this as well because then it's that boundary crossing Mm -hmm. part and it's 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 then that they know exactly your feelings at all times yeah and is that healthy would you Mm. it's like dear diary but my diary is literally here have (laughs) a read your diary is like thousands of people like (laughs) everyone's getting involved and I find I find that just sometimes a little bit of a big thing to yeah to get your head around like you don't realize how many people know your business until somebody comes up to you and knows your business yeah and yes. makes a comment on it and you're like oh my god yeah i shared that and they actually know that. how do you know that and then and like you know they're like it was on instagram and i'm like oh my god yeah like, shit yeah that was on instagram so is there anything <laughs> so everyone knows is that. there anything you wish you learned sooner with your career, particularly in Instagram, like, is there anything you go, oh, I wish I didn't do that, or I wish I would have handled that differently, or, you know, is there any anything you would have done? I kind of, I kind of wish I'd got into the modelling industry sooner, because I didn't realise, like, how much I enjoyed it, and how much, like, I feel like it's really focused me in my life, like, you know, I've always been a freelancer, always been a performer, kind of dabbled in, you know, like, entertainment, all that side of stuff, um and like it's kind of focused me and I feel like this is what I should have been doing I I say I feel like it should it should be what I was doing like from my early 20s but also I'm in a completely different place mentally than I was in my early 20s so I think if I hadn't gone on that journey then I wouldn't be where I am now able to show up as myself yes so it's just one of those hard things yeah it's almost like you don't want to wish any changes for your journey because yeah, that, that that's what's you, led you yeah, here. Definitely. But also, I'm like, God, I wish I'd felt like this so many years ago. Yeah. But you've got to go through that shit to come out the definitely. other side. I mean, it kind of leads me on to those sort of like final questions, which I, I always, not 
not feel like oh I feel obligated to ask people but it's always like what's next what's in the future where do you see the industry going in the next couple of years for your social media platforms but also you know for modeling in this in the space that you're in I yeah that's such a hard question social media I don't know because like I'm almost waiting for the moment where like social media just like ceases to exist or, I like, think it will Instagram implode gets shut down yeah exactly like I feel like it's so I thought it was going to this month genuinely I, I <laughs> was like the end. I was like this is the end yeah like, so with with the formats changing yeah, I just thought everyone, when, like, is, everyone is everyone is over TikTok, it. and yeah. I'm not really on TikTok at all um, and I feel like that's where most people are going to now. And I'm like, I'm still here on Instagram. Like, I like photos better than videos. Oh, um, me too. Tell me about yeah. it. Yeah. And like, I feel sad for like, yeah, photographers whose platform is kind of going. So social media wise, I don't know where that's going. I feel like I'm riding that wave, you know, that's <laughs> as long as we can. Mm. Um, and I do really enjoy doing it. I feel like my, my content's getting more focused now onto helping women with a fuller bus, like dressing and just being more confident like if I get dms from women who are like you have given me the confidence to wear that top because like I saw it on you and you look great and we're a similar size and I'm like oh my god they just make like that just lights up my whole day yeah um when I get messages like that but in terms of modeling um I'm definitely trying to get well across the pond is where we're going that's exciting um, it is exciting i can see that for you kind of like in a the watch, crystal ball that's in front yeah, of me yeah watch this it's like a watch this space because there's things in the works that you know i don't really like talking about things until they're kind of happening no, i agree but it let's just say yeah watch this space and your girl will be in the u.s next year amazing manifesting I, it. I feel like you will be but also <laughs> follow her follow Paige oh, yeah. she'll be all her info will be in the show follow? notes so you guys can um, follow along on her journey if you want to get an insight into what she's up to and yes, I guess that really leads me on to my final question oh, which is okay. what should other models be focusing on right now for the future <sighs> I don't know honestly being happy I love that I like just be ha- if you're not happy what is the point yes it's genuinely my mantra of life right now that, like you've got to enjoy life we're literally here I'm gonna get really cheesy we're just now living just throw life. Out a whole load of like cheesy one liners but like we have one life and if you're not enjoying it and I think we spend our 20s worrying so much about what we should be doing, our career, making sure and like keeping everyone happy and yeah. like keep yourself happy. Like, ticking boxes. Yeah. Ticking, to getting ticking things boxes. Done, hitting yeah, milestones. Yeah. To do lists and like making sure we've done them. And it's just like at the end of the day, be happy. And if you're because if you're not happy, like what is the point? Mm-hmm. Totally is, agree. Yeah. And that has been such a lovely chat. We are so oh, hot in this I car. am so hot. I am. I look like I've just been in the sea. We might have to go get back in the sea yes, to cool off. We actually because might. this is a joke. But it's been amazing having you on the podcast. Oh, thank and you so much. Please, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much. We'll have to get you on again. Oh, yes. Um, but it would be so nice to kind of just see where you go in the next few months, yeah. this year. Watch this space, guys. You guys, it's been a happen. hot girl summer. Literally, we are in a car. And hot, it's two hot girls oh, in a very hot, steamy car. Oh gosh! This sounds like this podcast is now going in another direction. Yeah, this is this is something else. This is some weird, yeah, it's, new it's development. Taking a, it's taking a turn. Oh it's my gosh! No, but it's been lovely to have you on, yes, guys. Of course, so everything will be in the show notes, so you can check out Paige's profile and I will also be linking my photography page down below if you want to check out the shots that we've got as well because they will be up as well Well, Um, can't wait to see thank you so much for coming on yes thank you so much for having me stay such a nice day we have thank you so much bye guys thank you so much for tuning in to Staying Sweet the podcast if you enjoyed listening please do leave a rate and review and I will catch you next week for a new episode